the most important part is learning from your mistakes. So if you guys remember, three months down, you're sitting there in a fetal position, the cash is a position, all these different positions, and it could have been avoided because it was right in front of you. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody, and welcome to another edition of uh, the Sunday, AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody ha is having a great weekend. Hope everybody's enjoying finally a little bit of a spring weather. Still raining a little bit uh, too much. Again, there goes April. Uh, but most important, summertime is coming. I think most of us need that sun, right? That vitamin, uh, what is it, the vitamin C, vitamin B, whatever the hell is, vitamin D. More important is we need the sun. Um, so let's talk about the markets. Quick review, right? So three months ago, around January the that's around January the fourth, uh, we broke down. Let's remember that. Remember that day three minutes from now. It actually becomes uh, very very important, right? So we had a three month sell off, very very aggressive sell bias. Again, once we broke the fifty day moving average, right? Great segue. Um, we started a pretty aggressive nasty sell cycle. And one thing you guys remember is that nothing breaks out in a sell cycle, especially not uh, anything to do with technology. I don't care how strong the company's financials are, how good they are fundamentally, where do you think the stock is uh, six years from now, it's not gonna be there tomorrow, right? And the most important part was, it was very aggressive, very nasty, gave some phenomenal opportunities to the downside. And then we had this really good rally, right? We had this double bottom rally, uh, February the 24th lows and March the 14th lows, really good double bottom, strong two and a half week rally. We reclaimed the 50 day moving average, which is super duper important. Had another run for another week or so, got rejected at the top of the supply here at the 150 day moving average. And here we are, right? Here we are right back to where it all started on the 50 day moving average. Everybody see that guys, right? We're right at the 50 day moving average. and. Here's the most important part. There's, there's something that is an old adage that says, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And that's the most important part. And if you guys remember, the reason why uh, January the 24th was, was such an important day, this is what started the sell cycle. This is the first close below the 50 day moving average on the queues. And as everybody remembers, this was pretty aggressive. Yes, you had some pretty aggressive, nasty snapbacks as well, but pre predominant at the time was pretty much sell bias and there was some really great opportunities. So here we are again, right? And the one thing that all of us, uh, all of us kind of know, and we always say to ourselves, like for example, myself, I say, boy, oh boy, if I knew, you know, if I could go back in the time and take my experience and take my uh, you know, and take all my screen time and adapt it to the internet craze, adapt it to uh, the 9-11 area, adapt it to the mortgage mess. Man, I could have been so much better off. Um, and that's the whole point, right? History is a learning, right? It, it's a learning mechanism. It's there for us to guide. And uh, the ones that understand history and acknowledge that it's there are pretty much going to do everything in their power to try to rewrite history. And that's what experience is. And technical analysis usually gives us a mulligan. And the most important part was where history was and where it might repeat itself, and we'll get to that in a second, was only three months ago. So for all the, everything that you went through, especially for all you guys who are uh, on a longer term basis, more on the swing side than on maybe on the intraday side, the most important part is learning from your mistakes. So if you guys remember, three months down, you're sitting there in a fetal position, the cash is a position, all these different positions, and it could have been avoided because it was right in front of you and you could have taken proactive step, steps, right? You could have taken uh, different areas, either hedging your positions, uh, taking down uh, exposure, or hell, crazy as it sounds, even being net sell bias, well, like I was for about three months from now. And this is where the cool part is. This is where you go from uh, being the difference between an alpha hunter and being the prey. And there's, there's two types of areas. Nothing good happens when we are below the 50 day moving average and nothing bad happens above it. And as you can see it clear in point, here's first day below the 50 day moving average, right? We got destroyed. 
Here's the first day above the 50-day moving average. We had another two-week run. So it's very, very important that you understand the line in the sand and significance, especially if you are a longer-term trader, because now going into tomorrow's sessions, you can make, you know, you can have a game plan, right? What happens if we hold above the 50-day moving average, right? What happens if we close below the 50-day moving average? You can make adjustments. You don't need to sit there like a deer in a headlight saying, cash is a position, oh my God, this market sucks. No, the market doesn't suck. The market is screaming at you and giving you an out. It's giving you a chance to prepare of what's about to happen next. You can see it visually with your eyes. First day below, we sell. Right, so far we held back to back days, exactly the same area on the queues, right? So far, so good. But you have to make you have to make preparations. You have to put yourself in a position come Monday morning, if we are below the 50 day moving average and we close below the 50 day moving average, you have eyes, right? You can see there's 25 points of downward potential on the queues if we do get that first close below the 50 day moving average. And as a productive adult, forget about even the word trader, as a productive adult, you have to take precautions. You have to make sure there's a game plan ready that if all aspects of the day happens, you are absolutely prepared. Yeah, if everything goes well, the bulls defend the 50 day moving average again, there's a triple bottom, they trap shorts, and they go right back up testing these, these recent highs. That's great. But again, what happens if they close below? And that's the most important part. And now that some of you guys have had a pretty decent, at least a short-term experience of a, a very, very aggressive bull market, followed by an aggressive sell-off, followed by an aggressive buy buy-ins, now you are, you let your experience kick in, let your mental Rolodex, all that screen time that you saw what happened below the 50 day moving average, let it be a guide, let it be that teacher, let it be that vault that you can go back to, that reference point you can go back to and say, well, wait a minute, let me see what happened. Where was I only three months ago when this selling started? What could I have I done better? What could I have done different? What could I have done proactively, not only survive that area if I'm bull biased, but take precautions, take necessary measures that I could have actually thrived. Now again, if you're an intraday trader, if you trade both sides of the market, this doesn't apply to you because again, if we close below the 50 day moving average, there is no subject of conversation. I will be a thousand percent sell buys, just the same way uh, you close below the 50 here and you're a thousand percent sell buys. Yes, of course, you can have days of the market's gonna go up in a sell bias market, but the point is the overall trend, the overall sentiment is still to the sell side. But if you are an investor, this is your time. Sunday, whenever you're watching this video, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, Monday morning, this is your time to take a step back, look at your holdings, and say to my and say to yourself, what can I do to protect? What can I protect? What can I do to limit exposure? But more important, what can I do to thrive, right? And we talked about this all the time. You don't need to be a victim. Even if you are a longer term investor, a longer term swing trader, right? If you're long Microsoft, and, and if we, we, we close, and again, I'm just using Microsoft as, as an example. If we, if we close below the 50 day moving average, I don't care how great Microsoft is, it's gonna get killed. I don't care how great Amazon is, right? Look at the 50 day. It's gonna get smoked. I love Tesla, you love Tesla, everybody loves Tesla. This shit loses a 50 day moving average, just like everything else. Look how much room there is to the downside. So the point is not if you are exposed to these stocks, you could turn around and say Sunday night and say, okay, I love Tesla long term. I love Microsoft long term. I love Amazon long term. I love Apple long term. What can I do to either, I wanna hold on to my position, but I acknowledge, hey, I finally acknowledge because I've seen it in my own eyes only three months ago, I acknowledge that things could get really, really bad very, very quickly. Now you have two choices. You could either sit there and complain about it. Well, you have a couple of choices. You, you could sit there, complain about it, moan and groan, the market sucks, duh, 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 right? That doesn't do anything for you. You could decrease your positions, right? At least that's proactive. You could do something for it. Or you could turn around and say, how can I successfully hedge my positions, right? So if you wanna be a shareholder of Microsoft three years from now, but you don't wanna bleed in the, in the process, right? Short some cues underneath the 50-day moving average. That's your, you know, that's your protection. That's your 
uh, that's your olive branch, right? That is your hedge. So until we get back above the 50-day moving average, your exposure to Microsoft could be less than the blow because you are short cues. Do something proactive. Don't just sit there and complain the market sucks. market doesn't suck. The market's the market. Your approach sucks, right? Our approach sucks. Our process sucks. Our, ma our management sucks. Our, our ability uh, to have emotional uh, reserves, that sucks. The market's the market. The market's going to go up. The market's going to go down. It doesn't make a difference what you feel or what you want to have and happen. It happens all the time. There's cycles of uh, strength and weakness all the time through your career, you just have to put your in a position that you are trading from a proactive point of view, an adult point of view, instead of sitting there like a deer in headlights complaining and belly aching because that's not gonna bring back your money. So that's your job, right? That's absolutely your job going into uh, this week. Uh, it is a short week. We have Good Friday on, um, well, Friday followed by Easter Sunday. Uh, so a lot of, you're gonna see the volume probably die out somewhere around Wednesday uh, into Thursday, because it is a, a pretty decent uh, travel holiday, even with uh, even with COVID. Is COVID even the things anymore? Yeah, it still is. We got about 2000 cases popped up right here in, in New Jersey. But at least going into this week, now you have a sensibility, right? You have a feasibility study, whether you're uh, uh, an investor and you wanna protect your position, or if you're a trader, an intraday trader, uh, now you could formulate an opinion, formulate a game plan to know if we hold the 50, that's a good thing. If we get close below the 50, that's a bad thing. And sometimes going into the week, you have to kind of watch both sides of the equation. But again, in my opinion, and, and again, I've been doing this for 23 years, nothing's subjective. Technical analysis is not sub subjective. We close below, that's bad. We close above, that's good. So it's very, very important to understand. And if you look at how the majority of leaders behave this week, you know, it was pretty bad, right? You had some pretty significant sell-offs um, right after some really significant runs. Like look at Amazon. Amazon's mirroring the 50-day moving average. Amazon closes below the 50-day moving average. You got at least 200 points, at least 200 points to its, to its uh, rising Bollinger Band. Look at, you know, look at, for example, uh, look for example, Microsoft, right? It's sitting right on its 50-day moving average. If Microsoft loses the 50-day moving average, you got at least 13, 14 points to its rising Bollinger Band. Uh, look at, um, look for example, a, a, a lot of, you know, look, look at Texas Instrument. Texas Instrument, if this thing loses the 50-day moving average, this thing goes all the way down to 169. Again, not the biggest average true range, but you kind of get my point. So if you are an active intraday trader and you're going through your, uh, you're going through your chart work where you already did, you'll see how many stocks are mirroring, right? Or mirroring the, 50-day moving average on the QQQs. So if the Qs fall, these stocks are gonna fall as well. And if you look at the Qs, it held, you know, they held 348.60s twice. You see that back-to-back -back days on the bottom of the 50-day moving average. This 348.60s fall, this thing has at least 20 points to the downside. And again, 20 points on the Qs is gonna get ugly very, very quickly. And the one thing that you've seen just three months ago when we lost the 50-day the, the moving average, there's no such thing as breakouts, right? Nothing is gonna break out in the technology space. You might have a stock that's gonna move up, but I promise you it's not going higher until we reclaim the 50-day moving average. So a uh, pretty basic game plan. It's an over, under, under uh, over the 50-day moving average continues to be okay. Underneath the 50-day moving average, it's going to be uh, a pretty ugly environment. And again, if nothing at all, acknowledge just what happened three months ago. We're not talking about something that happened you know, 20 years ago. This is something that you could correlate and something you could see with your own eyes only when back uh, to January. So if you are an active trader, make adjustments. If you are um, a, a very a passive investor, but you are worried about potential uh, backdraft, again, start putting a game plan into play. Short some spy, short some cues. Do something proactive that you're taking down your exposure and making sure that you are okay. And once the, the, once your position starts reclaiming back the 50-day moving average, that's when you can start taking off uh, your hedges to get your position net net uh, positive back to the upside. So let me give you guys uh, some ideas that I like. Uh, AMD looks terrible. I mean, everything looks terrible. Look at the bottom of the range here. Watch this thing this week. If AMD takes out this whole massive cycle uh, that started on January 28th, this thing has room down. All the semiconductors look terrible. NVIDIA, 
uh, continues to be really bad. And NVIDIA takes that. Look, look at this move on NVIDIA. NVIDIA has a shot to get to 220 if it starts con confirming Friday's channel. Uh, that looks terrible. Microsoft, we talked about, is, you know, an inch away losing the 50-day moving average could get killed as well. Uh, look at ISRG, right? ISRG is just sitting there on the 50-day moving average three days in a row. It loses this bottom channel here. This thing has what? 25, 30 points of downside. That looks terrible as well. Uh, Tesla, you know, Tesla might put up a little bit of fight because there's a lot of rising support. Because again, remember at the end of the day, it did break out above the 9, 950 level. But if it starts losing this whole rising 50 day support, uh, rising 20 day support, yeah, there is uh, some downside room. So uh, again, tomorrow, a uh, very, very important day. Um, again, don't minimum, you know, don't diminish the significance above the 50-day moving average. You're, if your money is important to you, and I'm assuming uh, for a lot of you guys it is, or I would say all of you guys it is, okay? Tonight is the night, today is the day, tomorrow morning is the day, make adjustments, make a contingency plan if what happens if we close the below the 50-day moving average, or what happens if we stay above. But don't sit there complaining Tuesday that, hey, who could have seen this coming? It's right in front of you guys. That's the greatest thing about technical analysis. These aren't special charts. Everybody has the same data. Everybody has the, you know, has the choice to either look at the data and embrace it or look at it and just fluff it off to the, to, to, to the side. But that could really, really do some, some pretty aggressive damage uh, if you neglect the warning signs. So guys, have an awesome weekend. I wish, wish you guys the best. Have a great trading week. Have an awesome Easter. And with God's blessings, we'll see each other tomorrow. Take care.